Welcome to Taco Bell. Hey, I, uh, I heard you reduced your drive through wait times? That we did, sir, by more than 15 seconds. Whoa, how'd you pull that one off? I can't tell you that, but what I can tell you is that we fulfilled your order five seconds ago. No way! internet welcome to food theory yokiro notification bell not to go all grandpa pat on you theorists but boy howdy has fast food changed why back in my day going to a fast food restaurant meant playing in a bacteria infested ball pit for a while then you would eat your food without bothering to wash your hands and then we would psychologically forge a lifelong brand loyalty to the restaurant by playing with whatever toy they shoved into our meal and we were not only liking it we were loving it ba -da -ba -ba -ba. now of course these days a trip to the fast food restaurant place out a wee bit differently. Heck, they probably won't even let you eat in the dining room, let alone jump in a ball pit. Point is, there's been a huge shift towards a more contactless fast food experience over the past year due to COVID, and it's turned everything on its head. For instance, McDonald's is now doing 90% of its U.S. sales at the drive through window. 90%! And digital orders, that is orders placed through the restaurant's app or through third-party apps like Uber Eats, are spiking as well. Take Chipotle, whose Q2 digital sales grew 216% percent year over year. And Yum! Brands, the parent company of KFC, Taco Bell, and Pizza Hut, reports that every single one of their brands has had a record-setting year when it comes to digital orders. As you might expect, quick service restaurants, or QSRs as the industry calls them, have taken note and are making changes to give their customers the contactless experience that they desire. drive through efficiency has been a major area of focus, and restaurants are pulling out all the stops to shorten the wait times for their drive through customers. Many QSRs are reducing the number of items offered on the menu or are even turning to digital menu boards that collect data on customer behavior and then use that to predict what you're gonna order. No joke. And those are just a couple of examples of the small changes that are being implemented. Many QSRs are investing in permanent structural alterations to their buildings. Fast casual restaurants like Chipotle are scrambling to add drive through lanes and quick serve restaurants that already have drive throughs are expanding them. McDonald's is turning many of its single lane drive throughs into two lane drive throughs as we speak. Same with KFC, whose next Next generation prototype features a second, separate drive through lane for mobile pickups only. But it's Taco Bell, of all restaurants, that's really pulling off the galaxy brain moves here. First, they're opening Taco Bell Go Mobile locations, which do away with the dining room altogether, resulting in a building that's 47% smaller than a traditional Taco Bell restaurant. But while that's certainly a new concept for Taco Bell, drive through only places have always been around. What's the big deal? No, what I really want to discuss in today's episode is the first of its kind of restaurant Taco Bell hopes to build in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. The franchisee, who submitted building plans to the city earlier this month, claims that this experimental Taco Bell location will be, quote, so different that it has never been constructed anywhere before. And honestly, I can't bring myself to disagree. Theorists, look at this thing. There's no dining room. There are designated curbside pickup spots for mobile orders, and it has four, count them, four drive through lanes. One lane on the end to accommodate oversized vehicles, and three lanes passing directly beneath where the kitchen is, located up on the second floor. Orders get lowered down to the customers on dumb waiters. Gotta admit, this building looks an awful lot like a drive through bank, and I was kinda hoping that the orders might get fulfilled via pneumatic tube, but I guess dumb waiters are cool too? I mean, you can't help but admire just how hard Taco Bell went with this building. Oh, drive through orders are up? Boom! Four lanes. People aren't dining in as much? Boom! No more dining room. Customers want a contactless experience? Boom! We will serve you with dumb waiters like we're lowering bread to the unwashed masses below. So, this this is obviously a bold move on Taco Bell's part, especially when you consider that I've never been to a Taco Bell and seen more than two cars in line. Don't get me wrong, I love me some Nachos Bell Grande as much as the next guy, but four? Four lanes! That is mighty presumptuous of you, Taco Bell. I don't know what's going on up there in Minnesota, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if toilet sales and plumbing services also needed to expand in recent years. You get what I'm saying? You get it? Taco Bell causes you to poop. Or is Taco Bell playing some other game here? You see, while it's easy to dismiss this as just some experimental headline-grabbing restaurant concept that'll go the way of the dinosaur once the pandemic ends and everything goes back to normal, I'm here to tell you that Taco Bell is playing a much bigger game here. This isn't just about loading your bowels with the remnants of a cheesy gordita crunch slightly faster. There's something else afoot. Taco Bell, via this restaurant, is looking to not only change fast food with this design, they're looking to change everything about the way we shop. And it pains me to say this because I really wanted my son to have that same bacteria-infested ball pit experience I had as a child, but the the fact of the matter is this.
this. There's a storm of ruin, my friends. A perfect storm in which public health, economics, and technology simultaneously converge to reshape multiple industries at the same time. And it's Taco Bell, of all places, that is on the cutting edge. Buckle up, theorists, because when it comes to the future of food, Taco Bell's two-story, four-lane drive through monstrosity is only a taste of what's in the forecast. So let's take a closer look at the three factors that are contributing to this perfect storm. First up, fast food isn't ever going back to normal because the restaurants don't want things to go back to normal. Think about it this way. A customer who orders a burger in the drive through is more valuable to the restaurant than a customer who sticks around and enjoys their hamburger in the dining room. It costs money to clean the dining area each day. It costs money to lease that extra square footage each month. The dining room needs air conditioning and lighting and decor. It is a money pit. But none of those costs apply to a drive through customer who leaves with their food without ever stepping foot inside. So drive through and takeout customers are great to have. But getting them is the tricky part. Or at least it was the tricky part until last year. With contactless dining experiences in such high demand, fast food customers and the restaurants now find themselves in a curious position. They both want the exact same thing. Less dining in and more takeout and drive through. So as we watch quick service restaurants bend over backwards to provide more and more drive through lanes, we need to keep in mind that this is as much about giving the customer what they want as it is about enticing customers to drive through, even long after the pandemic fades away. Now to the second factor that's contributing to the storm, technology. Third party delivery apps are booming, which is allowing ghost kitchens to thrive. Now we've already tackled this topic in a recent video, so definitely go watch our Mr. Beast Burger Ghost Kitchen episode if you haven't already, but here's the skinny on the spooky ghost kitchens. If a restaurant has a staff and commercial kitchen that's being underutilized, they can become a ghost kitchen and prepare menu items for other restaurants on the down low. The ghost kitchen gets a cut for preparing the meal, and the customer gets the delicious, professionally cooked meal they wanted, even if it's coming from a restaurant that they might not have expected. Now, the rise of ghost kitchens is great news for this wacky new Taco Bell restaurant, because they couldn't possibly have a more ideal building for this kind of setup. After all, it's designed to fulfill drive through and curbside pickup orders as efficiently as possible, making it the dream scenario for food delivery drivers. And by becoming a ghost kitchen, or even by sharing their kitchen space with another restaurant, the Brooklyn Park Taco Bell location could mitigate a lot of its risk. Think about it like this. Taco Bell's lowest performing time of day is breakfast. To hedge against this, they could team up with a restaurant that does perform well in the morning, like Starbucks or Krispy Kreme. That way, their second story kitchen and four drive through lanes are humming along at full capacity morning, noon, and night. And it's more important than ever for QSRs to operate at max capacity, because it's estimated that by 2022, 70% of all delivery orders will be placed through third-party apps like Uber Eats and Postmates. And this is a bit of a double-edged sword. True, third-party apps bring more customers to the restaurant, but it can come at a steep cost. For example, last year, restaurant consultant Giuseppe Badalamenti posted to Facebook a Grubhub receipt from an anonymous restaurant he works with. After fees and commissions, that restaurant's $1,042 in sales became just $376, not even enough to cover the cost of the food, according to Badalamenti. Granted, restaurants don't have to sign up with third-party delivery apps, but if 70% of customers are ordering through the apps, that's a little like saying, well, the restaurant doesn't have to stay in business either. Now, some cities have stepped in with regulations that limit third-party delivery app fees, typically around 15% or so, but there are plenty of areas out there with no such regulations, and restaurants don't have the clout to negotiate better terms with the delivery apps in the midst of a pandemic like this. Which brings us to the third factor in this perfect storm that's gonna permanently change fast food for good. Restaurants need a way to stand up to the delivery apps, and joining forces is maybe the best way to do it. Now, possibly my favorite thing about Taco Bell's Brooklyn Park concept, aside from the fact that it seems to have, like, parking for 10,000 bicycles out front, is how easily the building can scale. Need to add more kitchen space because you've partnered up with a ton of other restaurants and now your shared kitchen is basically a huge drive through food court? No sweat, just extend your kitchen space a bit further. Oh, and guess what? That creates more space for yet another drive through lane underneath, which will accommodate the influx of new orders. And if enough restaurants start delivering out of one location, then delivery costs should get driven way down. Not only will all the restaurants sharing the kitchens be able to collectively negotiate better terms with the app, but theoretically, the delivery driver would be able to pick up multiple orders on one trip through the same drive through Suddenly, rather than five drivers making five deliveries from five different restaurants, now a single driver can pick up all five orders at once at the same drive through window. Plus, if this drive through food court grows large enough, they might be able to start their own delivery app.
app, or even reject third-party delivery apps altogether. So Taco Bell was definitely thinking outside the bun with their Brooklyn Park restaurant concept, and ultimately I believe their over-the-top, or should I say under-the-bottom drive through concept will catch on in one way or another. After all, who doesn't love efficiency? Other commercial businesses could just as easily put this concept to good use as well. Because at the end of the day, Taco Bell's designed a contactless distribution center capable of accommodating personal vehicles. And that is a huge deal because it's not just fast food customers who want efficient contactless options. All sorts of customers want those things. That's why grocery stores, home improvement centers, and the likes of Amazon have been dumping outrageous sums of money into solving the logistical nightmare that's called last mile delivery. Last mile delivery refers to the final step of the delivery process, when the product travels from the warehouse to its final destination, usually the customer's house or a retail store's shelf. Say, for instance, you make the wise decision to purchase a Furywear zip hoodie. Congratulations on your life decisions, by the way, you're gonna look great in that thing. Now, after the hoodie gets manufactured, it begins a long journey to a distribution center. Despite the fact that it's traveling so far, this part of the trip is pretty inexpensive, because that hoodie can be shipped in bulk with thousands of other hoodies, as well as other incredible Furywear products, which, surprisingly, would all look great in your home, come to think of it. But when your hoodie reaches the distribution center, that's when things get tricky, not to mention expensive, because those thousand Theorywear products must now go their separate ways to get delivered to a thousand different theorists in the area. Multiple trucks and schedules and routes have to be coordinated, which is why a whopping 53% of shipping costs go to this so-called last mile, even though it represents a mere fraction of the total distance that that hoodie had to travel overall. Meanwhile, drive through sidestep last mile delivery entirely. drive through customers straight up drive themselves to the restaurant, aka the distribution center, using their own vehicle and their own gas and their own time, and they pick up the product themselves. Forget last mile, it now becomes more like last inch. Why do customers do it? Because it's really no skin off their back. drive throughs are placed conveniently along routes that they're already traveling, meaning that they can get the product at a moment's notice whenever they want to get it. It's a win-win for fast food products, and with the right kind of building, it can be a win-win for all other types of products as well. So the drive through yes, the lowly drive through could actually be the elegant and inexpensive distribution solution that everyone's been looking for, and it's been under our noses the entire time. Imagine pulling into the nearest Taco Bell and ordering a chalupa, a Krispy Kreme donut, and also everything on your shopping list for the week. There's no delivery process to speak of, so Taco Bell is able to offer you all sorts of products that Amazon either can't or won't deliver. Ice cream, eggs, alcohol. When I lived in California, Amazon even refused to ship light bulbs to the house. I can't believe I'm about to utter the sentence, but Taco Bell can fulfill my needs in a way that Amazon never could. A building that allows customers to pick up their orders for themselves, or hire someone else to pick it up for them, could alleviate the entire problem. Until, of course, drones become a thing and solve last mile delivery for good. So in the end, I just gotta say this. For as dumb as Taco Bell's new design looks on paper, it looks really good when it comes to the future of shopping as we know it. So that looks good for the future of shopping, but do you know what looks good for the future of learning? Skillshare, our sponsor for today's episode. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Whether you're looking to explore new skills or deepen an existing passion, Skillshare can help you reach that next level. They have classes on everything from culinary arts to video production to productivity. Hear that right, theorists? They have courses that actually teach you to boost your productivity. As a matter of fact, I took their class, Productivity for Creatives. Build a system that brings out your best, taught by Thomas Frank. The course helped me realize that while I've put a lot of thought and effort into crafting a physical workspace I enjoy working in, I haven't given the same attention to my digital workspace. Yeah, my computer was a hot mess of disorganization before this. Turns out that my digital workspace was booby-trapped with pretty much every unnecessary distraction in the book. But now that I've done some digital housekeeping, thanks to what I learned through this class, watch out world, I might just have the bandwidth to finally launch that fourth theory channel that I've been meaning to get around to. Skillshare is curated specifically for learning, meaning that there are no ads, and they're always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever the creativity takes you, and it's less than $10 a month with annual subscription. So get those clicking fingers ready, because here comes the deal. The first thousand of my subscribers to click the link in the description below will get themselves a free trial of a premium membership, so they can start exploring their creativity. So hop to it, theorists. Those first thousand slots are not going to stick around, and like I said, classes like that productivity class are absolutely worth the watch. So don't waste your time, get more productive, take advantage of that free trial membership of premium, and most importantly of all, never forget, it's all just a theory. A food theory. Bon appetit.